so I'm doing this uh, episode, today's episode, uh, a lot later than normal. Oy, very late start to the day. I feel kind of bad because uh, I've still got lots of work to do, lots of perfume orders to do. And uh, yeah, I had to take um, Mika, my favorite miniature schnauzer, to take her to the vet this morning. Uh, she couldn't walk. She wasn't walking and she didn't eat her food. So I was thinking the worst uh, while I was driving her to the vet, I was thinking, oi, is this the last time I'm going to see my dog? I thought, oi, you know, I thought maybe she would have to be put down. I was, I, was just, I don't know why I was thinking the worst. Anyway, the vet examined her. Anyway, she turns out he thinks it's just a twisted, either a twisted knee or a twisted hip, he, uh, or a strained hip. Uh, he's not 100% sure, but all her other vitals are fine. So, so he just gave painkillers and hopefully she'll be uh, all right. In fact, she's just sat up now looking at me. I think she knows I'm talking about her. So I've got three miniature schnauzers. I think Mika Mika knows she's she's my favorite. She knows uh, that I'm her favorite, that she's my favorite, I should say. And um, the other dogs probably probably know it as well. So anyway, so she'll be on medicine, on med Bernice, I had to take a uh, Mika to the vet this morning. She, she couldn't walk. Um, she's just, he just said, it's, he thinks it's just a strain of the hip and the knee and he gave, he gave an injection and some pills and he says that if she still can't walk by Sunday, then we must, uh, call her, call, call the vet and take her back on Monday. So I was thinking, I was thinking, I was worried that she'd have to be put down and I was prepared for the worst, but the vet examined her, he put a, he put the thermometer up her tochus. He examined her vitals and he says, nothing sinister. You know, I thought maybe she might have, she walked out. While I'm busy explaining to Bernice, the dog, she walked out. You know, it's amazing. I'm busy, talk I was actually talking to Bernice. And she just, if I, d I if I walk, I, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Anyway, let's just pretend that didn't happen. Although it's difficult. To, anyway, there's worst. You know what? Worst things are happening. Everyone's, this whole, everyone is really, there's a lot of anxiety I pick up. People are really, really worried about this, uh, this third wave, this uh, Delta variant. And uh, more and more people that I know are dying. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget this. This is like, more than a year ago, back in March or April last year, I was on Gareth Cliff's show on the Cliff Central. And I'll never forget Gareth uh, saying, I don't, know, I don't know anybody who's got COVID-19. Do you know anybody who's got COVID-19? So he's busy insinuating, well, he's busy saying that, you know, this is nothing. And I, I, now, not only do I know people who've had COVID-19, I know people who've died. Thank God, luckily, nobody close, close, close. But my friend's father-in-law died of COVID two nights ago. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that I know from a distance that have passed away, a lot. Um, the one cemetery that I know of, they normally do two funerals a day or one funeral a day. They did seven funerals the other day. And I see a very popular actor. Um, honestly, I never heard of him. Mutodi Nesheke. He's a, a well-known actor. He's, he was on Generations. And um, I looked at photos of him. What's, what makes it scary is that he was a really fit, healthy guy. A uh, photo of him without a shirt. He, he was ripped. He was a healthy guy. He tested positive for COVID-19 a couple of days ago. He was doing okay. He was at home. And then suddenly, um, last night, he suddenly had trouble breathing and they rushed him to hospital and he died. Now, so this, this thing has got, this COVID-19 has got, uh, it's got no pattern. Because normally, you, you know, there's a, the, the, people think there's a pattern. You get a little bit sick and then on the eighth day you get really sick and then, and then, and then you feel better after two weeks and et cetera, et cetera. No, this guy just a couple of days, boom, dead. 
Terrible, terrible, terrible. I saw somebody else I know, also a young woman in her 40s, healthy woman. I mean, she feels, she's been sick now, she feels shit for four weeks. She's been sick for four weeks. She doesn't feel great. It's terrible, man. Yo, it's just, uh, it's, it's very, it's, 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 it's like surreal. It's, it's weird. You know, you, you, it's very unusual. It's something most people are not used to. Just dealing with this death all the time. People, you know, dying. It's it's a not a familiar feeling, so it is strange. And whether you like it or not, you could be the most stoic, um, toughest, uh, emotional, per- uh, em- emotionally tough person. But you know, it it, it it will affect you, and I think it's affecting me. And it's it's kind of it's kind of weird, and uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to, to, to really get the, the header. Do you know that I was actually talking to you and you walked out while I was talking to you? Do you know that? So were you doing the show? No, well, the show was me talking to you. I was telling you about the dog. And then I turned around and you not saying you weren't there anymore. Anyway, the vet said that um, it'll take about two hours for the medicine to kick in and then she should be able to walk. But she's been lying there since I put her there. But he says that her vitals are fine. She's all right. Anyway. But you think a bit of a wash is going to sort You reckon a wash is the answer? You think at Onderste Port, when they train the vets, they, they say, give your dog a wash and that'll sort the dog out? I tell you, if, so if I get COVID-19, a bit of a wash, and, uh, and I'll be a, a bit of a spritz and I'll be okay. Yeah. You know, anyway. A lot of pe- people who aren't dog people, they can't relate. But, you know, we close to our dogs. So I can't help but it, uh, you know. But I'm not. We but I don't, we're not one of those mad dog people. We're not mad, bordering on mad, almost mad, but not totally, totally mad. What's this yeah. Do you want to test her out? Do you want to pick her up and see if she can? Uh, anyway, let's not let's not do that. Shame, poor Britney Spears. Hey, I thought that she would win her case. I thought she had a chance, but I think where she she lost. Right, she tried to cancel the conservatorship. Um, that her father has over her since 2008 she lost now i don't i I, maybe i've missed the judgment i haven't read the details but i don't understand the exact judgment the exact details the reasoning behind her losing her case because just anecdotally it's in my opinion and bernice as well agrees with me she's probably still nuts now everybody politically correct Everyone who's for women's rights, and I'm for women's rights, and so, you know, we all are for women's rights. So is Bernice. Our gut reaction is, ha, huh, this is another another, another blow, another negative um, assault on women's rights. But you know what? You've got to stay, you got to stay um, objective. And you've got to think to yourself, maybe, just maybe, Britney Spears is unstable. You need to consider that. Maybe she is unstable. Hey? And judging by just a little bit of what she said, she didn't come across so great. She spoke about her, 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 her IUD, internal uterine, uh, uterine or you, what's it? Device. Uterine device, which is a, she can't, she just, she got very emotional. And, uh, the, the, you know, when you get emotional, you know, you come across as unstable. But you know what? On the other hand, her life isn't so terrible. She was holidaying in Maui with her boyfriend. Is that such a terrible life? Yes, her life is not great. Everything's red. It's all relative. Her life is not great as what it could be. She could have the freedom to do her own thing. Well, she hasn't. But maybe, 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 just in this particular case, we should consider not turning this into a whole big gender rights kind of issue. Is it, maybe it's not such a a big thing against women. Yes, the Cosby case, huh? We discussed this yesterday. I discussed this yesterday. Yeah, the Cosby case, Bill Cosby being released is just just diabolical. That's that's basically telling telling women. In the world and in the universe, uh, 
in the solar or women in the solar system that uh, the world in the solar system just not does not care about women you could there's no way there's no two ways about that and then um musician artist steve kakana passed away um yesterday and a lot of tributes uh, going out to him um I don't know a lot about Steve Kukana. I just know the name. I know that he was a famous artist. And I know he was involved in that huge South African hit by um, Sipo Hot Fix Mabusa. Mabusa, that song, Burnout. Uh, he, he, was the, he, he, he was involved in that, in that song. And actually, he, and he was blind. And, he, and he, was a, he became an advocate later in life. He actually became a lawyer, an advocate, which I only discovered yesterday, which is amazing. So he was a great inspiration and a great South African icon. And no, he did not die of COVID. Everyone who dies now, everyone assumes it's COVID. Well, in this case, uh, Steve Kukana, he apparently had some long, he was suffering uh, with some long illness and he did not die of COVID. But rest in peace, Steve Kukana. Um, very sad and a lot of people paying tributes to him um you know it's yeah and uh ordinarily you know in oh i don't, I don't, I don't know i don't know what to say it's just we're just living in such a such a weird time such a strange time we haven't I haven't spoken about that building collapse in surfside uh in florida um, how many bo- how many bodies they've retrieved? Eighteen bodies so far. Um, so there's 140 something people unaccounted for. Chances are that's been just over a week. It's been eight days. Chances are they're not going to find uh, survivors. And um, U.S. President uh, Joe Biden and the wife Jill, they they went to go visit yesterday, and they they prayed with the families, and he visited the families that are. Dollar waiting, and it, it must be it must be quite something. Bernice, what did you want to say? Joe Biden uses every opportunity to talk about his own stuff in every speech, and people call it empathy, but I just think it's inappropriate. What did he bring up? He brought up his loss. His loss. With he because he his family he lost half his family in a car accident many years ago. Is that what he brought up? His wife and his daughter. His first wife and his daughter. Yeah, people do that. Um, a lot of people, uh, they think it's empathy and they, and they think, oh, I'm making myself relatable. But you often just come across as self-absorbed and you're just thinking about yourself and you're then making it about yourself. I mean, what happens if people there lost their entire families, like more than two people? What he said would be a trivialization of their loss. Yeah, yeah, I know. No. You have family members like that. Yeah, no, no. I got, a, I got a sister-in-law. She does that. It was bizarre. And when my father passed away, my my sister-in-law started talking about her her uncle who died. Uh, that that's what she does. It's her way of trying to relate and be empathetic. But yo, just you just come across as a self-absorbed, just making it about yourself. But anyway, don't know what to say. So we don't have a president today. We've got an acting president. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa is in Lusaka, Zambia today. He's attending the funeral of the former, uh, the first president of uh, Zambia, Kenneth Kaunda, fondly known as KK. And uh, he's there for the funeral. And uh, who is our standing, uh, our acting president? Minister of Basic Education, Angie Moshecha. That's great. What could go wrong? So... uh, I remember the one time we had an acting president, South Africa invaded Lesotho. That was, I think, uh, Gacha Butelezi was the acting president that one day, and then we invaded Lesotho. That, that, that was quite something. But that was a long time ago. Hopefully, we're not going to invade Lesotho again today. Or inv- we could, you know what, we could, we could invade Swaz. Please do not invade Swaziland. Yes. King, so, King Mswati III apparently is hiding in South Africa. The people of Swaziland are revolting. They no, they are revolting as in the verb. They're not revolting as in the adjective. They are still they're nice people. Um, so they are revolting, and there's riots and there's serious stuff going on there. The border between Swaziland and South Africa has been closed. Um, and um, so let's just hope we don't 
This, is there a reason we'll, we would invade Swaziland? Please don't. Just don't invade Swaziland. That's all I can say. All I can say. But I know I was getting all morbid and talking about death and we're living in this weird time. But also there's a, there's some, there's a lot of like, um, there's also a lot of emotion. People are, people are sending messages. Um, I'm standing in the queue about to get my vaccine. People are getting vaccinated and they, they, they all emotional. And, and that's very nice. Um, and they all happy and, and it's, it's, it's good. And then, the, and then people are, are, are also coming up with, with, uh, I mean, there was a report. It's, they, they, people are complaining. Just open it up to 40 year olds as well. Just open it up to 40, open it up to everybody because it's just, it's just ridiculous. We need, we need to vaccinate everybody. Good news. The Johnson and Johnson vaccine, according to research, the data has come out to show that the Johnson and Johnson vaccine has a very strong efficacy against the Delta variant. Now, when you say Delta variant, don't say Delta variant. It's because you don't want to say Delta variant from India. So people are, so you might think if you say Delta variant, you, you know, joking that it's from India. No, we call it Delta variant because we don't want there to be this negative impression of India. So there we go. Well done, Johnson and Johnson. So they did something right. But we're not getting, we're getting, we, we, you know, yes, we're getting more vaccines coming in, but not enough. And uh, we just, we got to push it. We just got to push it stronger. Got to push it stronger. Now, so Jacob Zuma, former President Jacob Zuma was sentenced to 15 years in prison by the, the, the what's the Constitutional Court decided, right? So you think it's the end. You think it's over. You think President Zuma has got a report to the police station and in, and in Kandla either on Sunday or Monday. I think it's Sunday. I read it's Sunday. So you think it's over. But you wake up this morning and you look at the news. It says here, Jacob Zuma is expected to file an urgent application for the, for the rescission of the Constitutional Court ruling that sentenced him to 15 months in prison for contempt. It says here, his, his defense team, led by advocate Dali Mpofu, has indicated to the state that the former president will urgently seek to stay, to stay the implementation of the order for his arrest and committal in the KwaZulu-Natal High Court in Peter Marisburg. What is this? Uh, is he like, he's like just pushing it and pushing it and pu pushing it. What, is there a, I didn't know you could do another application. He's doing another application. Can you believe it? Another application. So it's not over. I thought former President Jacob Zuma has ac had accepted it. He I thought he respected uh, the, the, the ruling. But no. He's going further. And also another thing. Another thing that is indicative of uh, Jacob Zuma not, not like complying and not just accepting that this is us. That this is it. He should have publicly. He should have stood up. And publicly stated. He should have addressed his supporters. All these Mashuganas, from the Onkonto Sizwe Military Veterans Association. All these Mashuganas that are, are that are at in Kandla. His buddy Carl Nias. He should have instructed them to back off. Go back home. Go away from Mankandla. Let the law take its course. But he has not done that. They're all crowding around. And they, it's like they, they're ready for, for, to fight. If Jacob Zuma was the, res, the responsible person that he should be, he would have, he would have, he would have made that statement. It's almost like an... This is almost our, like our January... Is it like our January the 6th? Not exactly. Not exactly our January the 6th. But, but it's not it's not good. It's I, I don't know what to say. Carl, what do you say? I can't talk. My head is up, Jake. Uh, can I prat me? My cup is bana. Jacob Zuma is a hat. Okay, so Carl the is now he got 
So Carl Nias got extracted from Deputy President David Mabuza, who, by the way, is still in Russia. And we, we've forgotten about that. Eh? David Mabuza is in Russia. That's another story. We don't know what's going on there. What, what is his medical condition? And apparently he's been to Russia before. Keeps on going to Russia. What does he need to soak in some Chernobyl water? What is going on there? Anyway, now Carl Nias was extracted from that situation. Now he's lodged up. Uh, uh, Jacob Zuma's uh, Yo. Can he prat me? Is in the hat? Can he prat me? Unbelievable. <laughs>